Aloha, Patrick Franti here with the Villa Group. Excited to bring you another market update coming at you from the 1st of August. Sitting out on my lanai on another beautiful Maui day. Um, I know normally we kind of jump right into the stats to start things off. I really wanted to discuss a couple trends that we're seeing out there in the market right now, and then I'll, I'll, I'll wrap it up with the stats. Um, <clears throat> some interesting things happening in the marketplace right now. Obviously, you know, year over year, all sales volumes are dramatically lower, a lot less activity in the market. Um, those are kind of the general themes that everyone's seeing, you know, nationwide. Um, Maui has been a bit unique in that our pace of sales has remained fairly consistent through this kind of shift in the market. Um, you know, there's been a pretty steady inflow of cash and 1031 buyers, especially for our resort markets that have been keeping, you know, keeping those numbers relatively stable. Um, I wanted to just identify a couple things that we're seeing out there. First of all, you know, I know I mentioned the resort markets. When you look at these resort markets when compared to our overall, you know, our more, more typical markets, right, where our living working people are, um, you know, the dynamics are quite different. For example, uh, Wailea right now, if you look at the median number, the median year over year is up 64%. Does that mean values in Wailea are up 64%? Well, not necessarily. What we are seeing is that the volume of sales at those higher price points is dramatically higher when compared to the more, you know, typical median price transactions. So we're seeing a lot more activity in those higher price points. We'll call it, you know, two, two and a half, three plus. And to be honest, even when we're getting into that four or five million up to 10 plus, um, that's where actually the market activity is probably the hottest right now. So an interesting, you know, interesting point to note, we're also seeing that on the west side over in Kanapali. Kanapali values are up 22% year over year. Now again, it just means we're seeing a higher volume of transactions at those higher price points and that's driving that median stat up. When you compare it to a more conventional market like a Haiku, Kula, a, you know, a typical upcountry, values are relatively flat year over year. That's because we're not seeing that activity in those markets that we are seeing in the resort um, areas. You know, and then we are, we are seeing that skew on the ocean front as well. So Paia, for example, on the North Shore, values are up 73% year over year. Again, I would not say, you know, Paia home prices are up that much, but what we are seeing is the transactions that are happening are all at that higher price point. Um, so just an interesting point to note. Um, it's something we've been seeing for, you know, definitely, you know, since the beginning of the year. We'll see how that trend continues. Um, that brings me to my next point. Obviously, a big factor in today's market is interest rates. That's a main driver of the national, you know, national home stats, right? Um, right now, after the latest Fed rate hike, mortgage rates are hovering right at seven. You know, we're sitting at nine month highs right now. Um, that 7% mark seems to be where we're kind of stabilized for the moment. Um, you know, that's for a conventional loan. If you're looking at short-term rental investment properties, that's going to bump up to seven and three quarter, eight and a quarter, you know, hovering into the mid eights even. Um, so something to be aware of there. Um, again, that's probably what's driving the, you know, primary volume of our market being in the cash and 1031 realm. Um, shifting it, well, okay, before I shift into the stats, I want to make one other point that we're seeing out there. So you know, for the last six, 12 months, a main driver in our market has continued to be vacation rental and short-term rental investment properties. The, we are finally seeing some softening in that segment. I mean, to be honest, it's very little and there's still a lot of demand there, but we are seeing some more opportunities for buyers in that short-term rental segment. Now you gotta be careful because a lot of these valuations are based on year-end 2022 revenue which we may or may not be seeing in 23. Revenue numbers are fairly flat, but we'll see how third and fourth quarter shake out. And my guts, you know, is saying that I think those revenues for 23 are gonna be down a bit. And that should in turn soften those short-term rental values, albeit very slightly. 
where we are seeing an opportunity in the marketplace is in the you know more median price residential condos. The inventory in that segment is up, believe it or not, and the market um, pace has been significantly slower. So things are sitting on the market a lot longer, probably driven by interest rates, and the primary buyer for those properties is financing via conven conventional means. So that's what's slowing down that market. I do have investor clients that are looking at those as an alternative investment to a vacation rental due to these factors. So something to keep your eye on. Now jumping into the stats. Um, single family homes, volume down 35% year to date, no surprise there. Condos down almost 50%. This is a sales volume number. So just means there's a lot less transactions. I'll get to the inventory in a minute and that's one of the main variables in that equation. Uh, median prices for single family homes were down about two and a half percent, pretty much flat year over year. 1.15 million is the median right now. Condos values are actually up. We're up 11% year to date. Something good to know there. Um, keep an eye on that too. We'll be interesting to see how the year ends out with that number. Um, days on market for homes are relatively flat at 120 days. Days on market for condos are up dramatically, 44% at just over 100 days. That means this time last year, things were selling almost twice as fast, which makes sense. There was more inventory then, and there was a lot more buyer demand then. All makes sense. Um, here's a big key factor to keep an eye on. Inventory levels. Inventory for homes were, is down 14.6% year over year, 8.6% for condos. So inventory levels continue to decline even though we're sitting at, and we have been sitting at, historic low inventory levels. So there's very little on the market for sale. Great news for potential sellers, for buyers out there. It's tough, you know, it's, it's we're, we're doing a lot of work right now for our clients, trying to dig up inventory, trying to find potential sellers and match those sellers and buyers together to put together deals. I mean, it's, it's, it's really required in this type of market when the active listing inventory is just so low. Something to note though, with those inventory levels low, the actual absorption rate is slowing. So when they call, um, what do they say? They say uh, months of inventory or months of supply, right? That's a big indicator. Those are actually slightly increased, which means even though that inventory is tight, the pace of those sales has slowed. And that's what's driving that mo those months of supply to increase. So a couple key factors there. Overall, similar dynamics to what we've been seeing. You know, if you'd like to discuss more about where we're seeing opportunities, either on the buy or sell side, happy to chat with you and look forward to connecting soon. Aloha.